Good evening, and thank you so much for joining me for this WNCT Now Digital News Update. I'm Emily Severidge, live in the WNCT Digital Studio. Let's go ahead and get right into some top and trending headlines for your Wednesday. Ahead of ELSA, which is expected to make landfall, which did make landfall earlier today, coastal towns are preparing for what ELSA could bring. Not in your science, Kayla Schmidt was down at the shore today speaking with vacationers and local business owners about what precautions they're taking. Many say they're just playing it by ear and plan to wait it out. And beach traffic today is still high, even with the incoming weather. Kayla will be live from Emerald Isle at 5 and 6 with more from Beachline businesses and preparations along the coast. Well, we are in a weather alert day today as we track Elsa, which made landfall in Florida earlier today. Storm Team 9 meteorologist Alex Wasilenko has that forecast. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I'm your Storm Team 9 meteorologist, Alex Wasilenko, reporting from the WNCT studios in the Storm Team 9 Weather Center. We continue to track the progress of ELSA today. ELSA making landfall in Florida and then slated to move towards the Carolinas by late tonight into Thursday. A weather alert day will be in effect during that time frame as scattered strong to severe storms will be likely along with an isolated tornado potential and some flooding concerns both along the coast and through interior portions of eastern North Carolina. After Elsa makes landfall today, it is going to head towards the Carolinas, especially during the day Thursday. Thursday is going to be our high impact day of weather. There will be some thunderstorms to note in the forecast today along a sea breeze boundary. Those are non-ELSA related thunderstorms that'll roll on by. By the overnight period, we dry out for a little bit as clouds begin to increase and then the real brunt of the storm begins to work on in. Thursday morning for that drive into work, there could be some isolated downpours and strong to severe storms, but things go downhill rather quickly with more severe weather, more heavy rain, damage wind gusts and also some minor coastal and inland flooding to talk about as we go into the afternoon and early evening some of these cells rolling off of the Atlantic and even farther inland have the capability of producing a few isolated tornadoes it isn't until late Thursday night into Friday morning that things finally begin to clear out Max wind gusts with this system, again, these are wind gusts. That means gusts from time to time, not sustained winds through the period of the event. Wind gusts will average 35 to 55 miles per hour, especially closer to the coast. When you talk about the rainfall, though, that will average 2 to 4 inches as a whole, with some localized 4 to 6 inch amounts possible in some of our southwestern counties. So in summary, get ready for the thick of things late tonight through Thursday as periods of heavy rain and strong gusty winds will be likely, along with some rough surf conditions, a dangerous rip current risk, and of course, the biggest risk of all going to be that tornado threat through Thursday afternoon and evening. Your seven-day inland forecast calling for additional isolated showers and storms Friday as a final front sweeps everything out to sea. By Saturday and Sunday, we dry out under partly sunny to partly cloudy skies as temperatures return to the low 90s. Be sure to download the free Storm Team 9 weather app so you can track what's going on inland and along the coast. The coast going to feature some hot temperatures too by later this weekend, only turning hotter by early next week as sunshine returns to the forecast along with purely dry conditions next Monday and Tuesday. Remain weather aware and stay up to date on the latest tropical and local forecasts as the next 48 hours wears on. I'm your Storm Team 9 meteorologist, Alex Wasilenko. You can stay with us here at WNCT as we continue to track ELSA and all other tropical disturbances and storms that could impact us here in eastern North Carolina. Like Alex said, if you haven't already, be sure and download that free Storm Team 9 weather app so we can keep you up to date and informed of severe weather near you, especially as we head into the brunt of hurricane season. Pamlico County deputies are looking for a man who was injured and taken to a hospital after a chase on July 4th. The suspect left Vidant Medical Center in Greenville before officers could arrest him, and he's now on the loose. Law enforcement officials say 27-year-old convicted felon Zane Marcus was trying to avoid a driver's license checkpoint in Arapahoe just after midnight on the 4th. Deputies say Marcus turned his motorcycle around and a chase ensued, reaching over 100 miles per hour. Seven miles into the chase, Marcus crashed what we now know was a stolen motorcycle and was airlifted to Vidant with an undetermined amount of injuries. 
Deputies recovered approximately two ounces of methamphetamine, a Glock handgun, and a small amount of marijuana from Marcus at the crash site. A passenger was believed to be on the motorcycle with Marcus but fled following the crash. Officials have yet to locate that person. Marcus will be facing a number of charges, including felony possession and a felony to elude, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Coming up after the break, trash is suspended ahead of Elsa down in some coastal communities and new laws being discussed by North Carolina lawmakers after a zebra cobra snake was loose in a neighborhood just last week. That and more coming up after this short break. You can get nine on your side news anywhere. We mean, well, anywhere at work. Over coffee, from the kitchen, the plane, outdoors, customized alerts. Everything you want in one place. Breaking news. We get it to you wherever you are. Out on the water. On a date. Even at the North Pole. Ho, ho, ho. WNCT 9 on your side. News on the go. Anywhere. Anytime. Finally, the wait is over. Storm Team 9 is here. Our experienced team is keeping you informed and keeping you safe. Depend on Storm Team 9. Thanks so much for joining me. If you're just tuning in, I'm Emily Severidge, live in the WNCT Digital Studio, bringing you some top and trending headlines for your Wednesday. Let's go ahead and get right back into some of those. Officials at Emerald Isle are suspending trash collections tomorrow, Thursday, July 8th. This is due to potential high winds from Elsa. Regular trash collection schedules for Oceanside properties will resume Friday, July 9th. Trash collections for the Sound Side will resume next Tuesday, July 13th. Well, last week we heard news of a zebra cobra on the loose in the Raleigh area before finally being caught by animal control. But lawmakers in North Carolina say they didn't realize how relaxed exotic animal laws were until the snake got loose. Now that could be changing. Our sister station in Raleigh has the story. This was, was just absolutely, you know, horrifying, incredibly scary. Senator Wiley Nickel didn't realize just how lax North Carolina's exotic animal laws are until this snake got loose in his district. We shouldn't have uh, somebody with 70 dangerous venomous snakes in their basement. Clearly, you know, our laws failed our state. The state's regulation only lays out how to house a dangerous animal. Senator Nickel wants to change that, but admits he's new to the issue. It's clear, though, is, is our laws do not go far enough. Um, we need to have better protections in place for folks. And how we get there, you know, we're still trying to figure out. There are no specifics yet for what the proposed law may restrict or ban. Looking at other states and seeing what they do, and, and we're really far behind. One of the states he's looking at is Florida. I took a look at their reptile laws. This spring, they banned 16 types of high-risk snakes. Venomous snake owners need a license. Rules mandate an escape-proof enclosure in an escape-proof room, along with a state inspection. Part of this process is looking at the whole picture for, for exotic pets and making sure that, you know, our, our laws are, are keeping up with the times. Florida's public record law allows you to see who in your neighborhood owns what. Disclosure kind of stuff is, is, is always important. I would want to know. Senator Nickel hoping new laws can level the playing field for cities and counties. I want to make sure that everybody knows if you come to North Carolina, you know, you're going to be safe. Well, that is going to wrap up this WNCT Now news update. Of course, we have more news coming up for you tonight on our broadcast at 5, 5, 36, 10, and 11. So be sure and check those out and continue to stay with us here at WNCT as we track Elsa over the upcoming days. We will have a lot of team coverage going on tomorrow when the brunt of Elsa is supposed to hit North Carolina. So we will have team coverage down on the coast tomorrow to keep you as updated and informed and safe as possible as Elsa comes in. So thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time.